Uh, um, here, this is the Reese crater there in, uh, in Bavaria. Uh, and it seems that the meteorites miss China altogether. I think there was one. So, um, some mistake, surely, as they say. Um, this is the this is the Reese crater, which is really worth visiting, and it's nerdling, and it's a lovely little town. And interestingly, the diameter of the wall is one kilometer, which is exactly the diameter calculated of the impact. This this impact happened about 14 million years ago, and you can see the margins of the crater out there. Um, so, uh, well worth a visit if you're near there. Now, and this is what was ejected from the, from the Reese crater, which is Moldavite, which landed in Moldavia, but, but the impact, the ejector went straight up into the stratosphere and was then carried downwind. And so you don't get very big pieces, and, and um, it wasn't pure silica sand that was hit, so this is only about 70%, but it's still rather pretty, Moldavite, sort of semi-precious. So in late 2009, I don't know, I, I went onto Google Earth and I spent 45 minutes before I found a pair of craters, 45 kilometers in diameter and one kilometer apart, in uh, that, uh, uh, those are the, 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 the locations um, uh, in, in Mongolia. And in the summer of 2010, I tried to get China Exploration Society interested in they weren't, they said, you know, we don't, um, it's, uh, you know, no. And so um, a friend and I went, we hijacked a couple of Chinese to make, give it a bit of respectability, <coughs> and, and we, we went to visit the craters. And um, this is what they look like on, on Google Earth. Um, you see that they're, um, the southern one is slightly different, and they're about a kilometre apart. And then there's a volcanic ridge over to the, over to the right. Uh, I went back recently to Google Earth and found this picture in winter um, from, from outer space. A wonderful, wonderful view. And that, that's what the craters, that's what the north crater looks like. And that's what the south crater and the north crater look like. So they're sort of interesting craters. Now they say this is volcanic. Okay, everybody says it's volcanic. Because it's true, it is on a, on a, in a volcanic field. It's a very volcanic area of China, which I'll come back to in a moment. But this is where it is, where the two dots are. And the bigger dot is Abag Chi. Uh, and this is at the edge of the Abag Chi volcanic field. Um, now, uh, this was in, in, in 2011, I went back. This time I took a geologist, who's Keegan Alanya, who's on the left. Uh, there's me in the middle, there's Joseph on the right, there's my son Bruce, the driver, and our police escort. We, had, we didn't have to pay for this police escort, they provided it, but they, 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 they were really scared because there'd been, uh, there'd been riots in Abag Chi two or three weeks before because a local Mongolian had been run over by a Han Chinese driving a, driving a, a, <coughs> a truck. And um, so they came with us, and they were really quite bemused. They, what on earth are these guys doing? So we spent a couple of days there, and that's, that's Keegan doing some geology. <coughs> and the North Crater looks like this. They, the, the Mongolian name for it is uh, Chelabula, and that's what it looks like. It's pretty much what you'd expect it looks like from outer space. Um, if you walk up, uh, there are gullies, there's lots of volcanic rock, chunks of it seem to have been chucked out. And then when you eventually get over these ridges, you come to a central plain with the volcanic um, cones and things in the middle. Uh, the South Crater is slightly different. It's steeper and it's more unit, rises more uniformly. Uh, and there's a relatively flat plateau at the top, but this is probably closer to the edge of the Abag Chi volcanic field. There's not many trees, I can tell you. Uh, but, interestingly, top uh, right-hand corner of the southern crater, there seems to be a bite missing, which Joseph said, he said there's a bit missing. So I call this the Joseph Hemi crater. You'll see here, there's definitely a bit missing. This is from 
from um, uh, Michael Schieber of the Rees Crater Museum. He, this is a Russian topographical, topographical map, sorry. And <clears throat> so uh, you, you um, two expeditions, the big picture of the Twin Craters is suspicious of a twin impact, plus nearby volcanic ridge to the east. Uh, the evidence found on the ground, we concluded, is all volcanic. Um, and then uh, we, we, we intended on this expedition to go to visit the Schwaging Mines east of Schielinghot. And these were, this was the guy on the right who said that he ran the mine. And when we came back, because of the riots, we, we had to go to the craters first. We came back and they said, no, 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 you know, you've got it all wrong. You got it. That's not what we said at all. What we said was, we mine quartz, right? And he showed me on the map where the quartz mine was. And then we take it down, uh, it's shipped down, uh, coals to Newcastle, shipped down where, they, where all the quartz are in China comes from. And then they, they crush it up and melt it and they add the, green, the, add the red stuff. It was just complete, complete myth. But anyway, <clears throat> so June 2015, armed with this information confirming Tong Liao, uh, <clears throat> which was obviously indirect, that the bags to ship this stuff were coming from Tong Liao, we went and visited the glutamate factory and asked them if they could tell us where the bags were made. Uh, and we got nowhere. So we then visited the place where uh, 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 Johnny had said the mine was, and um, that we eventually found it. It was a disused quartz mine. Uh, it, it's used now by, by a bird laying eggs. So, uh, and that's where it was, Shuijing Quartz Quarry, I put down there. I suppose it was really a mine. So we travelled quite a long way from Tong Liao, but at least we at least we we confirmed that that there had been a certain amount of economy with the truth. Now, why have I drawn that line there? Well, that line's almost at right angles to the long axis of the twin craters. And if the glass arrived here, is it possible that it came from from that? That's the impact site. Mm -hmm. Well, Oscar Wilde said that an idea that is not dangerous is unworthy of being called an idea at all. And Einstein, who was an even more prestigious man, said, if at first an idea is not absurd, then there's no hope for it. So here's an idea, a crackpot theory. Fact. Dumbbell-shaped bolides are very common out there, and some of them are crossing our orbit. What's a bolide? A uh, bolide is a, is, is a meteorite. Oh. Uh, it's something that hits you. Okay. Uh, um, and this is one that I picked off from... Somewhere on the internet, I mean, there, there's, there's a registry of these things. This is Meteorite Tutatis, which actually, to me, I'd suddenly realise it looks like a sleeping elephant mm. with the trunk over here. Mm. So, um, what would happen if one crossed the Earth's orbit? Now, it has to be at an angle of 20 degrees or more. <coughs> if it's more than 20 <coughs> degrees, then you'll get circular craters. If it's less, you'll get, you, uh, if it's very uh, much less, you'll get... A sort of bouncing bomb effect. So, um, and we know that if these if these are impact craters, we know the size of the bolide. It's got to be about 600 meters by 250. So it's somewhere between very big and bloody big. Okay, uh, but it's not catastrophic. So it comes in. I worked out the kinetic energy of Dumbo. We'll call this bolide Dumbo. It's 150,000 to 300,000 megatons explosive force coming at that speed. Uh, it will create astronomic pressures and temperatures on it, impact, and that word is used advisedly. And you can work it out, it's 10 to 20 million times more explosive energy than the Hiroshima atom bomb. So you wouldn't want to be near that for a bit. Okay, Dumbo travels at 20 kilometers a second, and he's coming in at 20 degrees or so, and hits the atmosphere and immediately cracks into three. It's like hitting concrete. Cracks into two big pieces. What about if he cracks into one small piece, the waste piece? And that's then held up by the shock wave. So it's slowed to 10 kilometers a second, and it comes in one second later. By one second, these two have exploded, and there'll be liquid silica on the top, 
and this is my hypothesis, it's outrageous, that he then bounces off, it's like a bouncing bomb, and aspirates, vacuum sucks liquefied silica and detritus into spheres. It forms into spheres because once you, uh, a liquid, a liquid, uh, uh, it, the natural uh, uh, um, shape of liquid, when it's separated, it, 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 it will separate into spheres. Small fragment with a hypothetical liquid silica tail. Of course, the, 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 this, would, this um, 50 meter diameter fragment would still be pretty much intact because it's just bounced off. Uh, it's not exploded. And so it would create a vacuum behind it and suck the glass. I know this is highly speculative, of course, but that, that's the model. Happens in the last ice age could be extremely important, actually, because this would be a climate changing event, even though not very big. And um, then, of course, at the craters, back at the craters, volcanism is reactivated, which fools geologists and other sensible people in 2016. Okay, so everybody's fooled. The question, is an impact of this size big enough to crack through the Earth's 30 kilometer crust and activate or reactivate volcanism? No, it isn't. But this part of China has a very thin crust with rifting. That means that the Earth's been pulled apart and voluminous <coughs> basaltic volcanism with what are called plume-like upwelling, upwellings and this postulated impact site lies on the edge of the very large Abeg Chi volcanic field. And this is, again, pinched from the internet. <coughs> so the impact just has to crack down to the upper mantle plume to reactivate volcanism. So uh, it's at least tenable. I mean, we're not having, we know that volcanism was almost certainly activated by the, mm. the, the giant meteorite that extinguished the dinosaurs. <coughs> But, you know, that, that would crack right through, the, right through the Earth's crust. This doesn't, we don't have to have this. So, and remember, that's the shape. And this, this uh, was given by somebody who works for NASA uh, uh, called Martin Rusak. This is a ten times exaggeration of the twin craters and this interesting ridge uh, to seven kilometers to, to the east. But, of course, if it's coming in from here then that might well be enough to crack and, and, and as well as activating volcanism at the, the size, at the site of the two large craters, actually also activate it down, down wind, so to speak, or down impact. So what we're doing, we're going to go again this year, start Beijing up to Fuxin, hire a car and drive around here, talk to the people in the antique shops, people who carve this stuff, people, you know, there must be people around who know. The, the reason why it, such, a, such a fact would be kept secret is not because they're doing anything useful with the glass. They just don't want to lose their business. So they're making a good business selling it from being crushed up to and added to porcelain and made into silly glass balls and things. But I mean, the potential, you know, I've got to try to persuade, and anybody who has knows government you know, ministers or uh, ambassadors, this is potentially very, very important because it, 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 fantastic geotourism, if you think about it, if you could preserve this. But the way things go in China, they, they're things are destroyed very, very quickly. And so it is a, a race against time, I think. Um, it's a testable hypothesis. First step would be to find where the glass is being mined, which would then be a pointer back to the impact site. At least it would test this hypothesis. Evidence of impact features, you could then look uh, in for the rocks, uh, uh, in the rocks around the craters, but bearing in mind the secondary volcanism will have covered it up with a lot of ash. So. Uh, you know, things like shatter cones and shocked quartz and other things, high pressure minerals may not be easily found, and features within the glass. Well, now, a final thought for audience skeptics uh, I like Edward de Bono's statement the need to be right all the time is the biggest bar to new ideas, and it's better to have enough ideas for some of them to be wrong than to be always right by having no ideas at all. <laughs> So thank you very much for your attention and also to these people who've helped uh, me follow up some of these uh, fairly outrageous ideas. If, there, thank you. if you have any questions, um, I'd be glad to try and answer them.